Hey, yeah, this is Michael Palmer, aka Pop Dog, and you're watching Rasta in the flesh. No stress. Rolling, rolling down. <laughs> We're here with Ross Talk once again with another legend. And this legend is called the one and only Mr. Michael Palmer. Mr. Palmer. Palmer dog himself. Yeah. And we, you know, we got to get into that. We're going to have to talk about um, <laughs> where that name come came from. from. And we're, but we, what we like to do is we like to start from the basics first. Yeah. And the first thing we want to know is where were you born and where were you raised? Well, I was born in Kingston. I wasn't born in, in the, that hospital here. People thought, well, Kingston, Jubilee. I was born at home. Okay. This lady, she, she, she had a, a, a kind of disformity. She's the one who let me know that. You wasn't born in Jubilee, no? farmer dog. I was your midwife. I said, what? She said, you born in my room right there. I said, so I went and I asked my mom and she said, yeah. The lady's name was Gong Gong, Miss Gong Gong. She had a, you know, she had one feet taller than one, like about a foot, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I was like, serious? She said, yes, yeah, you're the only kid around there that was born in this land. You could tell them that you was born here, 11 Freeman Lane. And everybody else was born in the hospital. hospital. Not me. <laughs> the special kind of guy there. Special kind of guy right there. So. As you're growing up, yeah. How long were you in? Were you in Jamaica before you migrated to the U.S.? Twenty-four years. I spent most of my life here. Yeah, in in. in yeah, I'm 58 now, so okay. you had 24 to that. 24 and what makes 58? I think it's another 34 years. <laughs> right. So I've been here more than half of my life. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you do you go back often? No, I haven't been there in like about 27 years. 20. 29, 28 years. Oh, okay. Sound like somebody I know. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody I know. Over yeah. there behind the camera. Yeah, okay. 28 years, man. <laughs> I haven't been back in a while. Okay, so 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 what gave you the, the musical bug, as they say? What, 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 what told you, hey, I can sing and I can... I can possibly make money and become famous doing this. Well, it wasn't about money and being famous at the time and point. It was just a neighbor of mine. And uh, I was growing up at about 10, 11. And, uh, and that's Leroy Smart. It really inspired me to do this. Leroy Smart was your neighbor? Yeah. So he would be just passing and singing. And, Trying to wreck up my life and I don't like it. He'd be singing just back and forth, coming from wherever he's coming from and going to just be singing. I'd be running to the gate and I'd be looking at him and he just singing, you know. Yeah, just like that. And I'd try to sing like him in my early days and stuff, going to school. And me and this kid up the block named, named, named Mark Campbell and another one lived further down the lane named Earl. Earl and Thompson, mm -hmm. all three of us, we used to say, who would have better be right smart singer? Because <laughs> we were just okay. fascinated by him, you know? And, but eventually, Uncle Me, you know, just advanced, because the same fact, made a school, now my man is secondary school, and so much entertainer was going to school at that time, like Tristan Palmer. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sugar Miner did pasture already. Dean Fraser went to that school. Earl Cunningham and me and Tristan and Steve Knight and Pat and Tony and another kid named Woody Noble. We, we just wanted to sing, but at that time, Tristan was the only guy that recorded and did a song, you know, which was Spliff Tail. You know, so, and he was very young at that time on point, and it hit, so, you know. We would do concerts in the auditorium just to raise funds for previous clubs that, you know, for the school. Like, we, we, we'd, have, we'd have, like, competition. Mm -hmm. Well, this house, Claude McKay, blah, 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 Shakes. You know what I'm saying? So, we would just raise funds just to get gears for our house. You know what I'm saying? So, from there, we just sing and 
I would just try to sing. And the first time I sing in school, man, it was it was like crazy. I was like, I want to go up there to lie them in. And he was like, you scared? I said, no, nah, man, I want to go up there to sing a one song. Man. I said, what do you want to sing? I said, I want to sing a Dennis, bro. Mm-hmm. And you know, say, Leroy Smart, I'm a boss. I'm a, I'm a choose to sing a Dennis, bro. <laughs> right. You know, I'm a sing Love Me Always. You know? And from there, so everybody, I say, yo, you can sing, man. You know, why you give so much trouble and you can't sing, son? I'm from there on, you know. So you say trouble? Yeah, I used to give a lot of trouble in school. <laughs> I, was, I was a nuisance, man. <laughs> you know, so, you know. Right. Eventually, we did it, and as the year go by, you know. By 1974, you know, me and Tristan became really good friends. And we was on the football team together, you know. He made it. I never really make it. Like I was on a reserve team, you know. Mm-hmm. And from there on, you know, through the music, how it I expand and I me done things Tail already. And me I say, yo, why well, I mean, you know when me a record a song and I want a record a song, you know. And I say, yo, no, no, no man. When I didn't do it, you know, I go talk to my friend and thing, which was Ozzy Thomas. Mm-hmm. Like about a year later, 1975. Me and him hook up and I do my first song name, Mr. Landlord. Yeah. And from there on, nothing happened, you know. Mm-hmm. Nothing happened, but at least I did what I, what I wanted to do, was record my first song. Right. <laughs> and it was a, I, f- I feel like Leroy Smart now, man. <laughs> so, you know, right. I'd be say, you know. So what, what song you made that gave you that push, that first song that people started recognizing you? All right, in about 1970, 78, as I, I just graduated from school, you know, I had this guy live around the corner from me. His name was Keith Wignell. You know, I was, I was walking through, like, we used to walk through people's house, yard, figure up on the main road, you know, and him called me by most and said, yo, Palma, yo, dog, come here. I mean, I said, well, I go on. And he said, you know, say, me have a rhythm, you have a moan, you hear? So I said, you have a rhythm, you have a beer, and then I'm telling you, you know, cassette and tape, and I'm mm-hmm. play it. And I'm saying, so, you think you're going to sing for me? I said, yeah, man, we can sing for it, man. I said, so, what do you think? I said, I like it. And I said, all right. See if I can find something to sing for it. And by the time I could walk to the bakery, Maxwell Avenue, and, and, and Glenwood Corner, I had this hook in my head, you know what I'm saying? We never called it hook then, but I had a melody. Mm. And we just spin around back in and go back, back to the lane and go back in the house and I see him. And I say, yo, I find a tune, you know, I'm ready for it, you know. He say, what? I say, I'm ready for it, man. He say, you just walk out there and walk out there and come back and say, you're ready for it. I say, yeah, I'm ready for it, man. Mm. He said, you sure? I said, yeah. I said, what you have? So I said, I said, I have a song with my name Angela, you know. He said, Angela? He said, sing a line with me here. So I started singing. Haven't anyone seen my girl, Angela? I heard that she is gone with another fella. And he said, yeah, man, we like that. <laughs> Just so I <happy. laughs> So I said, so I said, yeah, man, I said, that, I said, yeah, man, I said, you sure, I said, I said, tomorrow. I said, tomorrow, what? I said, I can't get on the channel, I want to record it. I said, you serious? I said, yeah, man. I said, you serious? I said, yeah, man, I'm serious, man. I will get the time. Next day, we go down the boy, and when we go in, we start to see, I meet the great Bonnie Tam Tam. Could you I, sleep the night before? I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. And then, that's not even the thing. Mm-hmm. Me, 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 me go to the great. Bonnie Tam Tam, I, I think he was the best engineer at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, a channel one showed him and another guy named Maxi. And he asked what we want to do, you know. And I said, my bridging said, boy, one record, one record, I'm a singer, you know. And I said, all right. I said, we tape them, we give him the tape and put them on the machine. And I was like, you ready, you out? And I said, I'm here, what you have now? And I said, see, bro, there's someone. I'm going to the vice boat and put on the headphone, man. And the first note me sing, him stop. Him say, back off of the mic. But think you have it, you know. 
Mm -hmm. I remember that clearly. Mm -hmm. I was just beat one shot, you know. Mm -hmm. All them lyrics that just come out of my head and thing. And I must say, boy, youth. And your voice mature. I think I could be a good singer. So that first take, one, two was done. One, yeah, I never, I never got a punch or nothing. And then from there, uh, the guy come and say, I'm saying, you know, say, when I really call you, it's an album I recorded with one of my brethren from on Lincoln Avenue. And I came to the to go record 10 songs. Make the beat them everything. And him, when I came to the studio, I can't sing the song then. I want you to sing the tune them, you know. Right. What you can do? So I'm saying nothing. Let me hear them. And I came go all the way up to Babacan City. The rears, me and two girls. And I said, okay, I'm going to be racing like, so like a group singing this. And I said, mm. anyway, but just come play to where I say and listen to the rhythm them and I'm going to go G-I-S. J-I-S. I never forget that. Right behind the stadium, this one. When you see, and we just start record this song. Them. I'm going to sing over upon it name, My Sharia Moore, with uh, Stevie Wonder song. And the rest of them, I mean, just write. I never, I never album named Angela. I never see that guy again up to today. <laughs> wow. wow. Up to today. You never heard about him? I never, you never heard nothing about I, him? Yeah, I said I never see that guy again. Yeah, wow. believe me. You know, so as I say, it's a whole lot of trials and tribulation. And mm. as I say, the music have a whole lot dent and curve and pathway and highways and byways, you know? right. so as I say, you know, from there on, we took a break and thing, but that song Angela had give me a little knowledge of people acknowledging, you know, acknowledging me, say, yo, I'm you know, mm -hmm. you know, so I took a break from that point, from 1970, that was 1978, yeah, 78, 79, between 78, 79, and then, we took a brief break from the like, election, it come 1980 and from 80 everything just up story. The election I think is the worst election of Jamaica. Mm. It was crazy. You know, so I believe nothing about the music. You know, so by that time and point, I just a road man I do. I just a do road, you know? Mm. And I write songs still on my head and get involved with a what about crap and as Mr. Crap, you know? Did that, did that election really, like, stop things? Stop things everywhere. You know, just, you know they, most of the guys in Jamaica, like, like, Kingston 13, 11, 12, mm. what was it? The election that was not the most, I mean, I can't tell you, I can't believe it. Mm. You know, me think, as a youth I grow, I want to the race election, me be old. What do you remember, like, the most about it? Yeah, well, all the people dead, man. Mm -hmm. It was so violent, man. It, 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 it was, yeah, I can't tell it, I live it. Mm. You know, it was just war after war, political war. And, uh, you know what I said? Mm. You know, and you don't get no out of that. When the election done, you know, you have to start feeling for yourself again. So mm. one thing leads to another. But as, 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 as it, goes on and moves on, you know, you have to just get yourself situated, you know, and be, due to isolation and uh, the mobility, you can't even get to move or you want to move, you know, because mm -hmm. politics of Jamaica, and I like politics of Jamaica, you shake the, 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 the Republican and, and these things, it never works around there. Mm -hmm. You try to shake a man and you might lose your hand, you know, so, as me I say, that was the worst time where it really started the music thing with me. Mm. The period of time there. And it caused a whole heap of delay and a whole heap of, you know, as me I say, it wasn't proper. So, let's get to the good stuff. Okay. Where, you know what we're getting into now, where did the Palmer dog come from? That's what we've been waiting for. Well, listen. In, in about 1979, no, not 1979, 1971, 71, yeah, 71, I'll get that name, you know, 
Because I used to live with my grandparents mm -hmm. in that same yard next to Lee Rice Mart. Right? And my grandmother left and come to America. So me and my grandfather left, leave back there. So every evening when we leave from school, we had us go by my mother and pick up my grandfather at dinner for care room, like religiously, every evening, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, one particular evening, I was, you know them three stages carrier that you had with an ant? You probably not know about that. It's like three, it's like three dishes, one, two, you know? They put them in and you hold them by the ant. Well, I had that in my hand like that, you know, walking. And oh, like small, medium, large, like he, that? No, they're all the same size, but they oh, okay. fit in each other and you have an handle to it. Okay. You know? Yeah. Anyway, me I walk in it, you know, and I'm an and thing, and, 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 and this dog is a dog run up on it. And, you know, I'm going to pick up a stone and fling off him. And this girl, she named Dan, me and I go to school together. She want to say, Palma, leave the dog now. And mm -hmm. she said, why not leave the Palma dog alone? <laughs> <laughs> and from that day till today. Something simple like that. They're just, they're like, you. The, the youth, them just say, Pam, my dog. I mean, I say, Pam, leave the Pam, my dog. What do you mean, leave the Pam, honor my dog? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, they're just, like, she say, leave the Pam, my dog alone. Like, she said, leave, leave your dog alone. Right. right. But she had them say, Pam, leave the dog alone. Right. And that name stick. My first record had that on it. <laughs> and my mother had a fit, man. She, yeah, she would, I don't have no dog around here. <laughs> you gotta change that. Yeah, the first record. I had a record come up with Palmer Dog Plant, man. Same landlord saying. I'm gonna tell him, yeah, you gotta change that. Yeah. You know? Mm hmm. So, yeah, and, and that's how from there on till today. You know what I'm saying? Stop. Palmer Dog, man. Mm -hmm. Now them change it to Pop Dog. <laughs> they call me Puppy now. Puppy Dog. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh. You know, so I yeah, don't sort of thing go, but as me I say, them things are something natural, and mm -hmm. no fabrication. I don't something that's something natural, you know. And we can remember the time and point, the seventy-one. I was eleven years old, man. Yeah, okay. So, what happened that you ended up moving? Like, what, what your, your, you said your mother had left, right? My grandmother. Your grandmother had left. Yeah. So she sent for you to come. You, you and your grandfather. No, she didn't get to, my grandfather died. Oh, he passed. Oh, okay. And and she came in and I had to go live with my mother now. Mm. Where I used to go pick the food at. Right. So that's like the same place that I told you that I was born at. Right. That was the same street. Mm -hmm. But it was a, 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 a yard over because that was 11 and the yard I was living in now was 13. Mm -hmm. That's where my mother lived at. So, yeah, from there on, that was where everything started. And, singing and crap and so can i ask why yes. were you with grandma and grandpa instead of mom well listen at that time i'm fine my mother have nine of us you know oh. she had nine of us and 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 my father was a f kind of funny guy like he 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 i took everything from my moms and stuff i look like my mother i got her complexion he's a dark dude most of my sisters and most of my sisters and my brother is dark. Right. And like about three, four of us is kinda shady light light. But I have everything for my mom. The color, big ass ears and you know what I'm saying? So, you know, he didn't like me like that when I was a baby. Oh. So at about four or five months my grandmother took me. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So I would live with her ever since until she left, until my grandfather died. Oh, okay. And yeah. then when you went when you came to America, that's you went to her. No, she died before. Oh, she I, died before she, you got no, no, when I came here the first time, she was living in in in, in Matapan in 1984. First time I came here, mm -hmm. she was living in Matapan, Massachusetts, and I flew down there to see her. When she see me, she couldn't believe. She was like, "Oh my God, my son, you're a star," because she always called me a son and everything. I said. I'm so happy you came to see me because she wasn't mobile at the time, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and she was so happy to see me. I spent the night with her and, you know, because she lived by herself then, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So she was so glad to see me, man. And then, you know, I came back to New York by her son's house. That's my uncle. He's dead now, too. So, 
it was, you know, I went back home and told my mom, I so, so grandma, man, she's, she can't walk like that. And, you know, that was 84, 84. 85 rather, <clears throat> you know, so. So like, um, your ganja tunes and your, your lick shot tune and all those, those were done here in America? No, no, no. Those were done back then? Yeah, if it wasn't for those songs, I wouldn't be here. Oh, okay, 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 <laughs> okay. Those are the songs that took me here, you know what I'm saying? Smoke the Weed is the song that really highlighted me and, 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 and took me on this journey, you know what I'm saying? And it just happened so coincidental that it, it's ironic how it happened. That's the old song that started everything, Smoke the Weed. Mm -hmm. And it was because of this, this, this friend of mine, Trevor Jr., you know, he was singing all the time and he was doing his thing. And I had a girl that lived, lived in his house in the same yard that he lives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one night I was just coming over his fence, you know, to see her. And he was sitting right there writing a song. And he was like, Mama, what you do? So I'm come check, no, no, you know. And I said, boy, I said, boy, dog. Look how you can sing, man. You need to just chill and deal with the music and take in the cars. You can sing in a virgin. I mean, I said, yeah, you know what, go, man. And, you know, all the things set up. And that was 1982, I was going to 83. And he was writing a song. So I said, what you doing? I said, man, I write a song. I have a record tomorrow, you know. So I said, so what can I say you're right? I'm here, you know? And I said, it'll give me a hard time, you know? So I said, play the play it, I'm here, man. I want him to play it. We just write the song again. A song named Joker, Joker Soldier. Joker Soldier. I just write it. I couldn't believe it. I just write it and say, so sing that tomorrow, man. I talk about it. You have some of living in the area. Claims that they're a soldier. You know, all of them do a terrorize the area. I'm a joker soldier, just I'm like that. Soldier. <laughs> and he couldn't believe. He couldn't believe, like, he was saying, yo. So the next day, he was recording the song on that same night when he was recording the song that day, you know. You know fortunately, me and him buck up again, you know. And I said, yo, I recorded the song, you know, and thing. everybody liked it, and I tell him, say, you write it, and I say, everybody, I say, oh. He man, a dog write it, man. I was a bump, I said, yeah, man, I write it, man. But me, at that time, I'm point, I couldn't go to the studio, you know? Cause mm -hmm. as me, I said, I have a little friction and go on and thing, and, you know? So I couldn't be out on a boat like that. So he must say, yo, Bias say, if I come down there, I want to see you, you know? Because Bias had the, the, the studio at nights. So me, I said, why am I even to want to come down? I'm saying, everything cool, man, Bias say, if I come down there, man, everything cool. So one night, you know, like about the next week or so, we got on the thing and it was like about it was like about uh, like about midnight I went down there and Peter came as the engineer and when we got on there, you know, what about people that show everybody was kids at them time, you know? Mm -hmm. And I must say, yo, you want a record tonight? I mean, I said, anything you say, I don't know. I said, well, yeah, I said, I don't know him, yeah, okay, just, you know. He said, all right, I'm soon going to call him. Anyway, I'm going to call him from the studio. Like, I channel one was a studio, eh? You come in like this, the bathroom is around the corner right there. They had a wheelbarrow, and the door was right here. You walk in, and, you know, the bathroom. So I'm going to go in the bathroom, because I'm saying, I never had to want, uh, you know, mm -hmm. congregated everybody and things. So I'm going to be in the bathroom, you know, sitting on the, the wheelbarrow, like, Till I fell asleep. It was like about 2 30, 3 o'clock, and about 4 in the morning. You know, Trevor Jr. and I was say, Yo, yo. Man, them say, If you come in, wipe up my eye, I'm going to bath you, man. Rinse up my mouth and come back inside. And I say, Yo, dog, I'm already in fear, you know. So I'm going to read here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read here, man. I say, Play anything, man. Just play anything. I say, Yeah. Say, man, play anything, man. So I'm going to destroy the other box and thing. And the second time that I'm going to channel one, after I sing Angela, and the second time that I'm going to channel one, you know, see that I put on the headphone and the rhythm start playing. And we just, hey, hey, I say, we smoke it every day, hey, hey. Just naturally, after I tap on my head, 
Whoa, I smoke the weed, but don't smoke the seed. And everybody knows you say Because if you smoke the seed, you're going to kill the breed. And my life changed from that, man. Okay. Total change, 360. You know? And, 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 when I say, yo, that's on your body, you know? Yeah. Some of us, me and Trevor Jr., leave the studio and thing, and within the next two weeks, they mix it off. And can you remember back in the days, not the 80s, that was, that was 83. That was 83. Back in the days, dub wasn't like now, you know? When man I tell about special and you call someone name, dub was new songs, like, mm -hmm. you know? New mm -hmm. tunes, like, the, 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 any song for play, a first song with you, that was like dub, kite okay. dip and dub, it in a release, it's like, you know? So, oh. and sometimes, okay. John Jalas and, 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 and Jammies and all them, man, they, them not release them tune, same time as them put them out, the tune are real bad. Mm -hmm. For them say, boy, I can't keep that tune here, you know? So it's the actual play? Yes, mm -hmm. so a dub play. <laughs> so them call that dub them time there, and I like now when them call, people are call up some name and, you know? No, the brand new song, and as long as you can play that, and nobody else now play it, I right, can release on a 45 a label, a dub. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So enough people don't know all them things there. But mm -hmm. eventually a lot of it will change. So the song was in the dub room at Channel One and like about two weeks, Trevor Jr. come and say, yo, yo, Palma, I said, what? I said, yo, Jojo, I ask you now. I said, Jojo, I said, where Jojo want? I said, I want to talk to you. That was Jojo run Channel One. Mm. Chinese man. Mm. I said the song bad, you know. I said the song bad and you want to talk to you. So I'm going to go down there and, say, and, and put me beside Soji and Peter came and said, I'm going to say, yo, you have a good song, you know. So hear this. I want to record some more song with you. So he said, Peter came and then you have time, like at the night, I do and record anything in my office, just record it. And he tell the soldier the same thing, because the soldier work at the daytime. The soldier, if you don't know, do, and you see him, just record him. And I said, what? What is going on with them out for? You know, this thing out for going, you know, and thing. <laughs> but him, George was the man who released song at Jamaica. That's the whole thing. He released everything in Europe and America. So anyway, he called me and thing, and I sing some more tune. You know, I sing some more tune, and he put out a... A, 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 a compilation with me and Frankie Paul. I think it named okay. Double Trouble. A Double Trouble it named Giant Favorite or I mean, I remember, but I mean Frankie Paul. So that time I'm pointing out me and Frankie Paul and, and Trevor Jr. and Redim Riders and Nado uh, Rankin and Wayne Smith. Everybody there is true, you know, so we get access to come nice true, you know, and thing. Jojo tell them to let nice true, you know, and they see him just tell Zebby, let him in, you know. So me, I don't know, I can go nice true anytime, you know. I get to link up and slide them. I get to meet up with everybody, you know. Every session, me just did a stand up and thing, and slide have a daughter live next door, me, baby girl. Mm -hmm. So the one time, him drop her off, and him see me I come out of my yard, and I say, yo, where are you, so? And I say, wait, I'm living, you know. And I say, I know your daughter, you know. I must say, yeah. So my job eventually becomes if you carry him down to see my evening time. When him there through the, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and bring her come home back because her auntie, her auntie was my good, good friend, you know? Okay. And, and the little girl, she lived a foreign. So that means you don't know. So I get in deep now and thing. But them now record me still, you know? Slide them now, I record me because you know them do the big thing and the big artists, the Tom Lynch, them and the Dennis Brown and all these big guys, mm -hmm. Jonah Del Gado and Jimmy Riley, them man, they are the big man. So, you know, but that's there still and go on by myself and thing. And Jojo come back and say, Yo, your side of the album, I do good, you know. You know, cause everybody keep talking about smoke the weed, blah, 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 and thing. And they, 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 they I start like go a dance now and you know the, the, the trauma and a lick shot will come eventually. Mm -hmm. You know? So I start recording for sugar mine at now. Like we should just do a studio and we just record some we just a record. But most of them work there. I never classify them as not. 
record, you know, me as I say, I really got put out, you know. But just a sing and me classify them as crap work, you know. But mm. me I get me thing together. You know, you have built, you have to start from the scratch. Right. But you just a sing and build up your confidence that me. Right. Yeah, so eventually, you know, with that street, you know, I'm a good and thing and, you know. So the, the Frankie Paul album, it was you on one side and him on the other side. side. Okay. And yeah. my other question is, I heard you say Joker Soldier. Yeah, yeah. Did that Joker Smoker come from that? No, man, we did it before that, man. No, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, did Joker Smoker come come after that? No, well, really, if I, thought, I couldn't say that in a car. Because I couldn't say that. Was it the same way you sang it? No, no. The melody different. is different. Oh, okay. you know, it's different. I couldn't say that. I, I wouldn't say that either. Oh, okay. You know, it was a, a different song totally. You know, but hey, right. it was like in the same area. But I don't think so because I did that. Like I'm telling you, like, it was '82. Tristan Palmer did that song like '86. Yeah. Okay. After entertainment, yeah, you know, so yeah, entertainment, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, I just thought I was right, them song there, both of the songs, entertainment and, and, and joke, I smoke, I just thought I was right, them, so I know him style. Okay, I see it. so yeah. now let's get into the question about the weed tune mm -hmm. and it reviving again mm -hmm. through Snoop Dogg, yeah, well. That is a yeah. That was one of the most. Mm, to explain it, I'm gonna say, all right. I was here. I get a call. They they had my publishing, mm, Green Sleeves, which is owned by VP, mm -hmm. and and they called me up and said, you know what, Snoop Dogg wanna do over your song and blah blah. And, you know, I want you. They, that time them do it already, you know. Mm -hmm. They had did it already, like they get consent and everything. So when they called me, you know, they just wanted me to listen it and, and, and just give approval. Okay, what I did was, I went over there, they played it, I said, I like it. And I said, what gonna happen now? You know, oh, 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 me I get, oh, oh, me I get paid, you know, oh, they, oh, me, me I get the advance, you know. Them said, no. Nah. Them don't get any advance. Right now, me and them have a problem with it right now. Them mm -hmm. say, them not get an advance. I should pray that this song becomes a hit. Well, you know the facts, I'm never really down with what I go on the music and know the whole theory of the music, the publishing and the mechanical rights. I didn't know all of that. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I may mean, never know, you know. But that's buying. I say, all right, you got us. Wait and see if it's gonna be a hit and whatever. You know what I mean? That was, I think that was, that was 2013. All right, 2015. It's like I lose focus on everything we are going and thing and. We go over there 2015 and I said to them, say, yo, I already know one thing and you know, I need some money for my kids and you know, I think at Christmas I come, that was December 12th, 2015. They gave me $2,000. Wow. And tell me some award them. They said you owe them? Listen. Mm-hmm. 2015, December 12th, they gave me $2,000 and tell me, say, them not use the word owe, you know. Literally, you know, but them say we gonna work it out. So most likely, if me gonna work it out, a two thousand dollar they give me, I lend it, lend it to me. Mm -hmm. Okay then, when I say nothing, you know, one thing and we did that, you know, me not, me not the idea, me try in between time, me I try to get in contact with Snoop, but I can't get no contact with them, car. A big star. But they're like California, I'm not sure. And I can't get even, you know, because nobody don't know me and thing, you know. So, but they're San Diego, and I do a big show at San Diego, and some guy came, but they say, you're going to give me a tip. We go there. We could even get near the stage. 
Mm. Anyway, 2017, that's the last year, I met my book up on a brother and thing. And and let me do a song fame from 2016. We do about lick shot in dub fame. Mm -hmm. And him, him started to explain to me. And I show me say, yo. Oh, you mean Snoop Dogg them sing a song? You supposed to have a house and car and everything out of that, you know? Are you, are you, are you, are you life saving that, you know? That's what I mean. What you talking about? That's what I mean. Any money sing a song them way there. Mm -hmm. You supposed to have your house money out of that. I said, I don't know yet. I was wondering why I said, I didn't get a dollar. They tell me I said, I pray. The man said, The song has 75 million hits. Mm -hmm. on, YouTube, on YouTube. See, that alone is supposed to give you some money. I said, They give me a dollar. Not eat. I said, I'm mad. You can't tell me it's a Snoop Dogg singing a song and I get a dollar. I said, You're a boy, I'm a light. I said, I didn't even get a dollar. They said, I didn't give them a money. I said, I'm mad. I said, brethren. That don't make no sense. I rob them, rob you. So I get mad now, I start going with them, I go on wild with them and thing. And the brother tell me some things, I ask them. And most of the brother tell me if you ask them, them can't give me an answer. Like the brother said to tell me, ask them, who sign off on the deal? Them tell me, say, them, them don't know. And that don't make, when I ask that fight, don't make no sense now. I say, I mean, I make no sense. Who know who sign? Path on the deal, them can't tell me. I don't know today, no, them don't tell me yet. So I say, Yeah, I want to release me. And thing, and way, and thing, and them give me a, a letter with some of bullish shit. Yeah, I try to swing me and I tell me about me and them leave, and some big pretty red when I get them liar hook up on me. And I tell me, say, Me and them leave on good terms, and we don't have a problem, and everything was conceded right, and blah, 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 and thing. And I say, Yeah. I just said, I get a brother and lie. The man said, don't sign this. Tell them to take out chapter 5. Mm -hmm. If they want to take out chapter 5, you never have a problem. And think, uh, Chris, him there in England and him can't do this. And the people that were there, they said, they can't do nothing until Chris come and him have to make the lawyer seek for something. I said, what happened to that? I said, me and I live on a good terms. I keep it as real as that. Me and I live on a good terms. So we are right, so me and I live on good terms. So. I said, okay, okay, wait till Chris comes. So I call him, he said, I'm there in Jamaica. Our next wicked funeral, the next Chinese one in the name, never leave. So I said, all right. He said, when he come, when he come, I'm here. I said, Mike, I try to tell you that everything is okay and blah, blah, blah. I said, watch out. But that's when you take out chapter five. Or paragraph five. That's what I want you to do. I'm here on the good. I said, okay, okay. I'm going to look it over. I said, if you look it over, I want to write it. <laughs> I want to write it in you know, and all me want to do is just take out paragraph 5. I want to write it in you know, you're a liar, so we have to look over back again. Just take it out. I said, all right, give me give, give a week. I said, give me a week. I said, all right, give me a week. And call me one morning you know, and say, hey, thing ready, you can come feed me. I know him feel the vibes, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, me and them in a big confrontation, you know, see it, because. I have Snoop Dogg sing my song. Sample my voice. Sing my lyrics. Sing my melody. And I give me a dollar. Man, so which part you ever hear that? Mm. Your lyrics. I hear lyrics and my voice upon the song to you. Know? Mm -hmm. Everybody else get money except me. Jojo dead and gone get money. Because I'm saying I'm on the master. Him get pay. Them couldn't rob Jojo, but them rob me because them feel like me I eat that no bag man. But eventually I'm a fine now. Mm -hmm. And I see it so I have a lie and thing and the whole thing I just more time the music. They're gonna have to give it up. They just stall and they gonna have to give it up. You see, the whole thing more time yeah, sometimes the music business man, you have to strong. I mean they, yeah, <laughs> they want, yeah, they have a lot sometimes, brother. You couldn't believe man. Then now after I start confront them. I mean, I say, remember, and I'm wanting to remember this, you know. When we come out of the desk, we don't know, you know. I want to tell Mr. Snoop Dogg, don't go to no money. Then, since this year, I'm confront them. Them tell me, say, Snoop Dogg, 
give them three thousand seven hundred and five dollars. Do you hear this? Three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars advance, and the two thousand of them give me said December twelfth. December twelfth, twenty fifteen, and the advance of them give me and them take one thousand. But me said, but the money they wanna give me, me paying it back already. So, I mean, have proof for sure to say, I'm paying about the $2,000 of the car. I'll tell them publishing the money collect. When they tell me, say, for two years, they're not giving me the money. And say, I the $2,000 of my own. When they take back. So, oh, I advance that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I'm trying to show the wicked them people is. Yeah. Plus, they have, they have all of my songs. I'm on iTunes, they never give me a dollar. Them I'm a song from Pandora, from the next one, Spotify, all them things that I never get a dollar yet. I don't know them do these things. I don't, I don't even know what to say, son. <laughs> it's pissing me off, though, but I don't know what to you say. You know, I... <laughs> that was a business right now. I'm going to tell her something, I'm going to tell her. It changed, you know? Right. And, and, you know, and I say change, you know, it just, the, 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 I don't know what more VP they want to, I just say life they want to. Right. Christian and the mother and the brother, I don't know what they want, they just want people life. I just say life them for just take now, because they must take everything with your own. No matter what they must take your life, man. Well, now, now, coming up to current, because, you know, I don't want to... I don't want you to look at me and be mad and I turn Asian and then you be trying to kill me here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, how, do, how do you feel about today's reggae music? Listen, I, I'm a reggae music right now. How that began to say it. And, uh, and the music that we are playing on a reggae music. Mm -hmm. It's a different type of... Uh, 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 Music, right? First, I'm telling you something. I'm not against them things, you know? Because mm -hmm. I prefer to know so them youth, yeah, I, do them, I sell them crap, I make them crap, and I sell it, and people are buying into it more than them a rock and kill and rob and thief. You know what I say? So, but I, 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 I say, the music I just, I'm pouring, you know? I saw me see it, you know? I'm pouring over, I'm pornography, I'm pouring over, 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 you know, sex a body man and the value of the music devaluate. The substance of the music me say devaluate devastatingly. You know, it, it, let me tell you something. If you can have one man, you can have a man there jail, a prison, and him a him a him a the, the artist of the year, three year in a row, and a jail him there. Just yeah. how you figure that? You know, mm -hmm. and him there at prison. Mm -hmm. And 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 him do a, a thousand songs for the year. Now picture this. You I record a thousand songs for the year. So them I do some six week songs where it last a six week and a year so them great. Mm -hmm. Which me find him to be more talented than that. Vibes cartel. Mm -hmm. And uh, me find him to be more Talented that way, he is. But him find something to work for him, and him just run with it, and people are run with it, and him. Mm -hmm. You know. But the music, as I say, a very few people are do some music now, and the music, you see, them now go acoustic, which everything is easy. Some of the music them, when the man might play, the man them do even no scale or no anchor. No. Mm -hmm. They don't know nothing, they just car everything that's there, it's set. You program it and you can set it. You don't have to know if the beat out of sync or the beat in sync or whatever. Them just a play. Then play one line, boom, boom, boom. And then program it. And then run it through whatever compressor them I run it through. And everything I pro tools. You know them can cut this off yes, and then we can cut the other side. And the singer them. The artist them not good neither too. Mm -hmm. And when I can't tell her why, I can't tell her so they're not good. Them have to sing 
Me is a man of a listening here. We can't believe the people them. We are buy record. Cause they must buy something them like it sound good to them. And they might like an artist. But if you listen most of the song them with them record, you can see which part of them cut it and you can listen and hear which part of the music cut and fix back. Mm -hmm. Line for line. Because sometimes the timing is not right. You understand know what I say? Mm -hmm. The timing is not right. So them, they, them sing the song them one line at a time. And then they move it, the line there. If they sing a good line, they move the line there and put it on the bottom um, for catch back after the solo, if them do have no solo. But if they're going to use back the same line there, any part of the young, they don't sing it over you know? They just move it. So they now they don't work. Right. Right. Call them studio artists. <laughs> they now they don't work. They are not studio artists. <laughs> them make, can't find the word for the but they now they don't work. Everything just move. You know? And even watch out. Alright. Me as a man we go through the era of music where you have to sing every line. Nothing can move at that time and point. Even now, I'm your old man. I have to move my hook from right there and put it down there. So now, if, if that one, you sing three hook, and you say, well, you listen to me, I say, well, that one is something better. Every time the hook come up, you just move it. Mm -hmm. You have to do that too, because it doesn't make no sense. You are going like you go around this thing, because it did it. Mechanically for your use, so why not use it? But the artists nowadays when we see them all over the world and them things there and them say, Oh them create on this and I'm this and that. When I listen to them song good, I'm listen to them. can tell you. Them verse there or them line there. Each bar them sing it all one at a time. No. Everything punching. Yeah. Everything them sing one at a time, like, like, he must say, Down in my own town, bad boys, them joke me down and them stop. When you hear that sound, mm -hmm. and them listen it, can I watch a line them here? I'm seeing the next two line. And you can't hear, because you can't see how it fit. Sometimes I'm good enough, because some of the engineers are really good enough. Then I fix that, make it sound like him sing that whole, that whole work, verse there. Mm -hmm. But then they're they not line for line, song them are sing. Mm -hmm. But the people don't really care, the people don't care, but them like it and them are spend. As I said, I'm glad them do something to elevate themselves and them not kill and rob nobody. Right. But the music, they the three singing and us, and the substance and da 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 you know? Uh, and the culture lasts too. Mm -hmm. The culture not dead. You see, let me tell you something. You see, the authenticity of the music devaluates bad. Because you know, no half pint, you know, no Juno Reed, you know, no Robert French, you know, Licker John, you know, Tristan Palm, you know, Barrington Levy, myself. You know, I'm, I'm kind of youth like we were. You go and dance tonight and you hear one song with each one of it and you feel satisfied after 35 years. After 35 weeks, it was it not so long. After 35 days, <laughs> yeah. them songs don't make no sense. Yeah. And they don't last. They, they don't last. Right. So they must be constantly. And everything sounds the same way. Them singers, you can just put them song on one beat and the whole of them sound the same way. But no people don't know that because they're into music. They're musically inclined to know that. You can sing one song, or the whole album can sing on one beat. The whole album with them have. That is a robbery without a gun. <laughs> so, how is it now for, for you foundation artists? Is it hard for, for you guys to still book shows these days? Listen, it's not hard, you know, but is is the is the is the is the revenues, you know? Is mm -hmm. how is how is how they 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 they, they is how they they wanna pay you. Right. You know? They don't want to pay you. A guy called up on a show and they might tell you, boy, you want to see me have two thousand dollars and give for that show then I'm not asking how much I charge because I feel like I'm going to do you a favor. Mm. 
You know, I, I'm in a real work that's something there. You know, car. What you call me and I tell me, I say, boy, I'm a pay boy, I want to see me keep a show next week, in, 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 in January, you know, and you know, when I like your panet, you know, can't give you $1,500, you know. Mm-hmm. So now, so these days, they basically naming your price. The, that my driver show, them now make a say, watch, you know, I want 50 cents. They might tell you where they might go, like they might do a favor. Because they don't see any them see your name all over the place and this and that and where. Worse in America. In America, the veteran artists, them, them get sabotaged more than anybody else. Mm-hmm. You see me, I say? You know, me, we get sabotaged more than anybody else, you know. It's like the more you pay them for come on them show. So, my last and final question is when it comes to these. You know that, that that infamous question everybody asks. What would you tell or say to up and coming artists now when it comes to the music business? What to look out for? Away from the the the, the, the world basic rights of the music, where the pro, production and the and the publishing and the, and the whole rights of the music is concerned. Only that you can you can try to coach them on basically. Other than that. You don't know. You can't tell them nothing about where well, you used to go in 1984. Because I'm going to tell you, say, you're old man. Mm-hmm. You can't tell them about them rights, or to defend them rights, or to go about them rights. Not sign for any, anything. Because they might be going good for them. You know, so they can hire somebody for review, whatever contractual agreement anybody put to them. Mm-hmm. You know, see? Me never know it will come to a stage where contract will get involved and this. Publishing and all these rights and never know about them things, but that's one thing. Right. So, you know, you can't tell them nothing more than just that. The business part of it. The music part of it, uh, them have the money ideals, you know. Right. And you have to just make them do them things. As I said, I don't bash them for the crap. Um, I apologize really and call it crap. Because I, 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 I live in, you see me, I say, but as I say, the music go out there though. You know, and the youth, if you carry the banner, they don't carry it, how they supposed to carry it. But through them, I eat. Mm-hmm. And they might eat vigorously, you know. And, and if you talk and speak your mind upon the whole aspect of the music and the direction where it go. People are going to say, yeah, yeah, and them old boys, yeah, they don't have nothing, and it's a lot of rain, and but at the end of the day, 10 years from now, the old boys still have play, and you better try, see if you can find one song, like the old boy, them, because at 35 years, every woman going to hear my song, them. Yes. Facts. <laughs> see, from 1984 to now, I'm going to go, I'm going to lick shot, I'm going to big dance, I'm going to lick shot, no more lean, but gun shot, I'm going to hear these songs, see me. I mean, you know, guy I play, them look at five years ago when them sang, all them sang with them. I mean, you hear them playing the dance, I feel come with new thing every day. So, if you try to tell them about that, they must say, I hate. But I mean, really, I hate. As I say, the only thing we can educate them upon or, or pre them upon is to tell them, say, yo, make sure you have your business right. That's all. Because they still have the crap and say, I hate. You know what I mean? So, Learn I love them. That's me love them, because at least, as I said, they don't bother nobody. Mm-hmm. I talk them crap, I mean, think I'm poor. All of them music to me for playing a strip club. <laughs> right. Uh, this is for them music. I mean, I see them for them music in a nice, decent dance hall. We say dance hall. And I don't want to jump on people naked, on mattress, and half naked, and all them things. <laughs> come on, man. Yeah, because I went to uh, Mingles about a month ago, and they playing all that cartel and popcorn. Yeah, they playing all them tunes, and then they then the DJ came and he took it back. That's when the crowd went nuts. That's when the crowd. The son of me. And that was the best part of the whole night. When all he right. went, and and he realized that okay, I have an old school crowd. It's Mingles. What do you think? think? Okay, it's Mingles. He had he went old school. So right. for the rest. You yeah. wouldn't even play nothing new yeah, after that. Yeah, for that's understand, man. Love to kill Couldn't. them. Them do them thing. Yes. And I mean, I fight them thing.
you know, and you can't teach them nothing either, because the whole thing broke down to money, monetary. It becomes the money wouldn't even ask, so is outrageous. Yeah, I heard they. They want to have 2000 for a dub, and a man don't even want to pay me 200 for one. <laughs> yeah. As I said, I'm going to bash, because when you can't eat, eat, you know, because I'm going to the gravy train, I'm going to stop somewhere, you know. We don't know what I'm going to stop. Them songs they want to do, when the gravy train stops, you know, and the people them start going against Sunday, you know, make sure you have an account, figure it out. Because you still have to see me, I sing here. Yeah. One minute. <laughs> yeah, I see me pass some show, see me. I say, I say, when the old boy depend on them show. Yeah. I mean, that business for 15 years when they depend on it. Because you know the song with no substance, Dada. I pay a pump for me, I sing about and, and Batman, say, so, uh, what happened? Um, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, so I just give thanks and know, say, watch out. I have some prolific song for me to live off of for long, long. I'm mean, with them guys in Europe and them places and Japan and all these places yet. <laughs> yeah, my friend them can tell you, every day them call me. Yeah man, every day I'm going to eat some meal at this time. I mean, I want to help a money for singing. We done. He's a minimum singer. He's a minimum weight singer. <laughs> <laughs>